So this is where our condenser is going to sit. We're going to have some line sets going up the wall. But as you see, there is a little bit of elevation difference there with that piece going across. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of 1x4 and put it on the wall behind the line set cover so everything sits flush. This is the location on where the second upstairs air handler is going to go. Um, right above the closet. So what we're going to have to do is go through the closet, come up in here, follow around, and then poke outside um, over in the corner when it's all out of the way. Okay, now for the electrical part of this. Um, but what you can see, I got my whole flex with the wire in it, ran out into the garage, penetrating into the house here, um, goes into the washroom. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but it comes up from the floor there. Travels up, curves over behind, and then right here, just kind of pokes through right into the back of the panel. And then come over here, and you can see where I actually penetrated into the panel. Um, this house was already wired for AC, which is on this breaker. The problem is, is this is a 50 amp breaker with 6 gauge wire going to it. Um, and that will not work for us seeing as how we only need a 20 amp breaker. So I wasn't able to use this wire. I'm just going to abandon it, cut it, cap it off, take this breaker out, switch it over for a 20 amp, um, run my 12 gauge wire over to it so it's no longer a fire hazard, and we'll be done with it. So this is where our penetration is on the outside of the house for the master bedroom. We had to make sure that it was in the right spot in between the window and the side of the railing here. It also didn't line up exactly inside. So we had to do some custom measurements in here and make our own little custom hole for it to come through. Okay, we have our line sets ran in and we're ready to hang the air handler. If you look closely, it shows you where the line's in on the air handler. So I'm able to bring these lines in to where they go and we'll be able to just mount it up, put a little bit of leak lock on the flare tighten it up and uh, hook up the control wire which you see here and we'll be done with the install in this bedroom now I got my connections done under the unit it's kind of dark um, that's the port where the drain line was I was actually able to on these units flip it around to the other side so now the drain lines coming out here and I could just tuck it into my hole back there and it'll be a lot shorter run and get the connection actually out of the house Okay, so now we're ready to start working on the condenser. Um, but first what we need to do is we need to make some sense of these line sets. Um, we're going to tie them all together, just like they are there, and make it nice and clean coming all the way down so it's not a big deal getting them inside the line set cover. So now we get to the point to where we are hooking up our refrigerant lines. But, if you see here, we have a 3 8 refrigerant line that's going to a 5 8 fitting. So, we are actually not able to make that connection without a reducer piece, which I have here. And as well with that reducer piece, we also have to have this little bushing here. I want to actually use some of this leak lock, and the leak lock just kind of helps it so it doesn't leak. And we got it all the way around. Stick this fitting on here. I'm going to dab some on this as well. Okay, and now all we have to do is screw this reducer on. Give it a little crank. Put a little bit more of the leak lock on here. We're also going to need some on this little quarter inch fitting. Now basically at this point, we just need to get the line set on there and tighten the nuts. Okay, now to the point where we're going to do our flared fitting. Since I've already cut it, bend it out here a little bit. Bend this one out here a little bit too. Be very careful not to kink it. So when you cut these things, it puts a nice ridge on the inside that you got to make sure to take off. So, what you do is you take your reamer. Got to make sure you have it bent down a little bit so you have no shavings going inside. Alright, ream this out. So that way when you use your flaring tool, it makes a nice clean flare for you. Alright, do a little tap, get it all out of there. 
And this one's super important because it's so small, you don't want to block anything with this. Never forget to put your flare nut on. If you forget this, you got to cut your flare off, start all over, and it happens. So get them both back on quarter, flop it up. going you don't want to go too tight either because if you go too tight you'll make your flare too thin and then it won't mm -hmm. be safe mm -hmm. that looks about good back it off and now you have a flare this will come right up poke right in there attach to that and now all we have to do is the 3 8 line we'll also have to repeat it for the third and the fourth one, but it's all pretty much the same from here. Okay, so I got all my flared fittings done. I uh, got everything connected down here. I had to pressure test to make sure that I had no leaks. With my gauges here, I brought it up to about like 250 pounds and um, I actually had zero leaks, so I just went to the next step and uh, now I'm vacuum pumping it down, um, evacuating all of the oxygen and any moisture out of the system. And while that's happening, what I'm going to do is we have all of our ports here for all of our electrical and low voltage and control wire. And what I did is I, I uh, labeled each one. Like this one is the B unit. Every single one has a, a B, C, or D on it. And then we'll just come up here and just wire them all up. Down to like 190 microns, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and close off this valve on the vacuum pump. Kill power to that. There's also four line sets running to this, so it took a little bit of time to vacuum pump it all down. We have all of our wiring complete. Black, white, red, green on all of them, except for our power. And that's black, red, and green for 220. Finished up our uh, line set tape here. Looks nice and clean. I still put a few zip ties on that down there just to hold the Rubitex on. So now I always like to open up the vapor side first uh, because it is the suction side and if anything hits the thermal expansion valves um, it will suck it back in through here and go through its filter dryer. So we're going to go ahead and crack the Freon now. And there we go the last little piece of light set cover that I gotta put on. I've already cut it to size. It goes on pretty easy. I really like this stuff. It's the nicest there is. I found that if you clip the if you look at it there's a smaller side and a, and a bigger side. If you clip the bigger side on first sometimes it fights you but for the most part you just kind of gotta get it where it goes and squeeze it together. Eventually, it'll all just snap together, and that's it. Now we're at the point where I just gotta take off my gauges, put the uh, put the cover access panel back on the unit, do some cleanup, and uh, pretty much it. <laughs>